is game four of the Western Conference semifinals. It's the Lakers and the Rockets. Blocked by Davis. Kuzma on the run out. LeBron with some English on it. And this is looking like a mess for the Houston Rockets. The Rockets are alive. Caruso. Oh! They're a win away from the Western Conference Finals. And we can always count on Kendrick Perkins to stir it up on Twitter. Last night during Game 4 of the Western Conference Semifinals, he tweeted out, The Lakers got three head coaches, Vogel, LeBron, and Rondo. This may go over some of y'all's heads. Carry on. <laughs> and you know KP <laughs> is here with us for this upcoming discussion. Now the Lakers go up 3-1 to one over the Rockets. <laughs> Stephen A., what do you think? Is the series over at this point? I think it's over. Um, I think Kendrick Perkins was absolutely right yesterday when he uh, indicated that. He said that the Lakers were going to win uh, game four. He was absolutely right. Max said that as well. Uh, but Kendrick was talking in a fashion that said this series is done, and I believe that he's right. Um, I can make no excuses for James Harden, 2 of 11 from the field. Now, he had 16 to 20 free throws or whatever, but 2 of 11 from the field in a game that could ultimately leave you down 3-1, uh, you just can't get that from James Harden. You need more, particularly against a bigger, stronger, better defensive team. That's number one. Uh, number two, Anthony Davis is just too dominant and is just showcasing it 29 and 12. He can do what he wants when he wants against the Houston Rockets. They have no answer for him whatsoever. Actually, in this particular game, Houston had nothing going on with the exception of an 18 to 2 run that brought it within 103.96, if I remember correctly. And that was courtesy of four straight turnovers by the Los Angeles Lakers, which is why uh, Anthony Davis said after the game they were turning the ball over too much. They're big. They defend. I can't say enough about Rajon Rondo, who's been absolutely sensational over the last couple of games. It's not just what he's doing. He is a floor general. KP is absolutely right. He's a third coach on the floor. There is no question about that. He's dictating pace. He's spelling for LeBron James because even when he's on a court with LeBron James, he's handling some of the responsibilities, taking that load off of LeBron James' shoulders, giving LeBron the license to be in cruise control or take advantage of mismatches, whatever he chooses. So that that's a plus. We know what Anthony Davis is doing. We know what LeBron James is capable of doing. Alex Caruso drops in 16 points. And the Houston Rockets have no answer. So here's what it comes down to. Uh, it would be helpful if they went tonight. I doubt that, I'm sorry, game five, game uh, five, uh, six rather. It would be helpful. I doubt that they will do it. Um, I think this series, I'm sorry, game five, I think this series is over. Um, and if this series is indeed over <laughs> tomorrow night, I believe that Mike D'Antoni, just like I said, if he had lost the first round series to the OKC Thunder, he would have lost his job. He loses this series in five games. He will lose his job. And if Daryl Morey, who is safe at this moment, by the way, has nothing to worry about and what have you, but he does get on everybody's nerves with his analytics because even when he loses, he'll tell you analytical categories in which how they won and stuff like that, which, which the owner and others do not want to hear, particularly when the other team is going on to play and your behind is going home. Uh, if he's not careful and he gives D'Antoni two support, he might go too. It's nothing safe in Houston right now because it's that bad because more was expected of them. Remember, last year, Tillman Fertitta was highly upset because they lost game six without KD on the floor. So the point was, and you lost it on your home court, the, the, what he said at that particular moment in time is, if you're going to lose, at least go back to the Oracle and lose in the Bay Area. Don't lose on your home court when they're down a significant weapon. Well, the same kind of thinking is going to exist here. It's not about losing. It's how you lose. Lose in seven games. Lose coming down to the wire against LeBron James and these boys. Don't get blown out in five games when, you know, you end up losing four straight and stuff like that. He's not going to take kindly to that. The Houston Rockets are a mess right now, plain and simple. Well, I thought the Rockets would lose game four. Uh, I think they're going to win game five, actually. And the reason I think they're going to win game five, I'm just going to, if this is an act of faith on my part, Stephen A., I don't want to believe that James Harden's going to go out like that again. You know, forget about game six without KD. How about game seven a couple years ago at Houston, right? Like, and by the way, the Warriors were, were fully loaded, and so were the Rockets. And it was the worst shooting performance from three in the history of organized basketball, and it was led by James Harden. Remember, Chris Paul didn't play that game. I know, Stephen A., you said 
If the Rockets would have elevated, then so would the Warriors. And you're entitled to that opinion. We can't prove a counterfactual here because, you know, we can't prove what didn't happen. But, but I think the Rockets could have won that game had they just even shot it decently, led by Harden. Since then, Harden, in, in last year's playoffs, they could have stolen a game from the Warriors and Harden, instead of looking to hit the shots, looking to jump under Draymond Green's legs and complain about the call, is dribbling out of bounds in the moment of truth. But every year, I see Harden make improvements under pressure, make improvements. First, he concentrated on his defense. Then even in, this, in the previous series, when his defense, when his offense wasn't going, he made a brilliant defensive play and a heads-up play to jump so the ball couldn't be thrown off of him out of bounds. And he's showing me little signs like that. And I have to believe, because I want to believe, that I won't have to be sitting here after the next game on Monday, sitting here talking about James Harden came up small. I have to think he has an MVP caliber performance in him somewhere. I want to say something quick about Rondo, who always elevates in the playoffs. It is amazing. I once asked Don Mattingly, the great first baseman for the Yankees, who was the manager of the Dodgers. I was doing radio in L.A. at the time, Max and Marcellus on ESPN L.A. radio. And I said, listen, how were you, one time he made the postseason, he tore the cover off the ball at the end of his career. How did you do that? Well, you know, you just stay the same. I'm like, no, no, no. A lot of guys just stay the same under pressure. You elevated. How, how do some guys elevate under pressure? He gave me a thoughtful answer, I thought. He said, well, you know that some other guys are feeling the pressure. And you, if you can stay who you are, can take advantage of that. And I think that must be what Rondo does, because in the regular season, he's not good. Sorry, Perk, he's not. Not in recent years. He's getting older. He doesn't shoot it very well. In the playoffs, throughout his entire career, he has been a stone-cold all-star. The Lakers now have their big three. Thanks for watching ESPN on YouTube. For live streaming sports and premium content, subscribe to ESPN+. Plus.